Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Ben Tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Ben Tutoring. And today's lesson is going to be about adding polynomials. So what you should know going into this is that like terms have the same exact variable with the exact same exponents on those variables. For instance, in our problem number one here, we have 8r to the fifth power plus 2r to the fifth power. Well, both of the variables are identical. They're both r's and their exponents are exactly the same. They're both to the fifth power. That means I can combine them. When you're combining like terms, you're going to either add or subtract them. So here we'll just take our coefficients here, and 8 plus 2 is still 10, right? So you'll end up with 10r to the fifth power. Notice that my variable r remained the same. I didn't change the variable at all. It remained in r. And especially pay attention to the fact that I didn't change this exponent. It remained a 5. The only time you change your exponents is when you're multiplying or dividing like basis. So here, I'm just combining my like terms. My variable remained the same. The exponent on the variable remained the same. And this is my answer to problem number one. Yep, just like that. I got a red box around it. Okay, let's move on to our next problem here. And problem number two, we have 2k plus 3k squared plus 5k squared plus 7. So many authors, teachers, and professors prefer that you'll write your answer in descending order of the variable, which means that you start with the term with the highest exponent and work your way down. So I'll be starting with my 3k squared and my 5k squared. These are like terms because they have the exact same variable k and they have the same exponent of 2. So 3 plus 5 gives me 8k to the second power. All right. Then I'm looking at my k to the first power term here, this 2k. I don't have any like terms for that, so just bring that down. And I'm bringing that down next because we started out with k to the second power. This next term has k to the first power, and my 7 here doesn't have any k's. So you can say that's going to be k to the zero power. So we'll finish up with plus 7, and that's going to be the answer to that problem right there. That's it. Here comes your red box. There you go. There you go. 8k squared plus 2k plus 7 is your answer written in descending order of the variable. All right. Many times they'll request that, and it's also just customary to write your answer in descending order of your variable. You start with the term with the highest exponent, and you work your way down, just like that. All right. Next, we have problem number three. In problem example three here, we have 3ab squared plus 7a squared b plus 5ab squared plus 13a squared b. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the term with the highest exponent on a. I'm going to go in alphabetical order here. So that's going to be my a squared b terms. I'm going to start with those. I have 7a squared b plus 13a squared b. Well, combining your coefficients, in other words, these numbers in front of your variables, 7 plus 13 will give me 20 a squared b. Then I'll be combining my a b squared terms. I have two of those, right? I have 3 a b squared. I also have 5 a b squared. So once again, I'll be combining my like terms by adding my coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables. So 3 plus 5 is always 8. So I end up with a positive 8 a b squared. And then this is going to be my result here. That's right. 20a squared b plus 8ab squared is the solution to problem number three. All right. Hope you guys doing all right out there, because I am. So here's problem number four. Here we go. We have the quantity of 2d plus 7 plus the quantity of 3d minus 1. Ladies and gentlemen, your parentheses here are just grouping your terms together. Because you don't have any terms on the outside of your parentheses outside of one, you can actually just drop these parentheses in this case. So technically, you're going to say 1 times 2d plus 7 is, is just 2d plus 7. All right, It's the same thing. Plus, same thing happens over here. You just have 1 times 3d minus 1. So it's just 3d minus 1. You don't need the parentheses. They're just in the way there. All right. From here, now that I've gotten rid of my parentheses, now I can focus on combining my like terms. So I'm going to start with my variable first. I have 2d plus 3d. And this is going to simply add to give me 5d. Once again, you don't change your variable's exponent when you're combining like terms. You're just adding the coefficients together here. Then I'll have my 7 and negative 1. Well, 7 minus 1 is still going to be 6, so that's my answer. That's it. Now it's problem number four. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, continuing on, we have problem number five. With problem number five, I have the quantity of 4x minus 8 plus the quantity of negative 1 plus x plus the quantity of 11x plus 5. Once again, I don't have anything other than 1 multiplying all these sets of parentheses. So we can just drop these parentheses. We just get rid of them. You don't need them. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4x minus 8. This will be a negative 1 plus x plus 11x plus 5. So I've dropped all the parentheses because they weren't needed. Then I'm going to work on combining my like terms, starting with my x terms first. I have 4x, 1x, and 11x here. Let's combine those together. 4 plus 1 gives me 5, and then 5 plus 11, that gives me 16x, just like that. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be combining the negative 8, the negative 1, and the positive 5 here. So combining together the negative 8, the negative 1, and the positive 5. So combining negative 8 and negative 1, you'll end up with negative 9. And then negative 9 plus 5 is going to be negative 4. And this is the answer. All right. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number 5. So we have problem number 6 now. With problem number 6, we have the quantity of 5x squared minus 4x plus 7 plus the quantity of negative 4x squared plus 3x minus 5. I have a trinomial, three terms, plus another trinomial, three terms. So I'm going to end up getting rid of the parentheses first. They're just in the way. So I'll rewrite this as 5x squared minus 4x plus 7, a negative 4x squared plus 3x minus 5. All right, now that I have those parentheses out of the way, I can focus on combining my like terms here. I'm going to start with the terms with the highest exponents. That's going to be my x squared term. So I have 5x squared and negative 4x squared here. 5 minus 4 will give me 1. So I end up with 1x squared, just like that. And, and don't write the 1. It's not needed. It's redundant. So don't do it. Okay, so just x squared. That's all you need. Then, I'm going to combine my x to the first power terms. Mm -hmm. I have negative 4x and I have a positive 3x. Combining the coefficients, negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 1x. And once again, you don't need to write the 1. Don't write it. It's not needed. Then, we'll be combining 7 minus 5. Yeah, it's still 2. So, I'm just going to bring that down. There you go. That's the answer. x squared minus x plus 2, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number six. Yeah, that was problem number six. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving. We have problems to do. We have problem number seven. Problem number seven, we have the quantity of 3m cubed minus 3m squared plus 4 plus negative 2m cubed minus m squared plus 6. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start with the terms with the highest exponent after I drop these parentheses, all right? Because they're just in the way. I mean, you just come to somebody's house and you just act like you're going to just move in, you know, and not even pay rent or nothing. You're just going to come in and just do what you want to do. But you're not going to do what you want to do here. You're not going to come in, parentheses, and just come in and just, oh, I'm sorry, I just got sidetracked, sorry. So anyway, we dropped our parentheses, and now, now, yeah, we're going to start with the terms with the highest exponent. So I will be combining 3m cubed and a negative 2m cubed here. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you that. So 3 minus 2, this gives me m to the third power. Just like that. Yep. Combined them. Mm -hmm. And remember, you do not change the exponent on your variable. Leave it alone. Okay? You're only going to be combining the coefficients. The numbers in front is what you're working with here. Then I'm looking for m to the second power those terms. Yeah, I have one right here and one right here. So this is negative 3 and negative 1 m squared. Combining those coefficients, negative 3 and negative 1, that'll combine to give me negative 4 m squared. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, we're looking at 4 plus 6. Yeah, 4 plus 6. This gives me 10. And 10 is the last term in our expression here, in our answer. So my result, ladies and gentlemen, we have m cubed minus 4m squared plus 10 done and done. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's problem number seven. I have some more. I have more problems. Number eight. In problem number eight, we have... 7m to the 4th power, p to the 5th power, minus 9m cubed, p to the 5th power, plus the quantity of 11m to the 4th power, p to the 5th power, plus 15m cubed, p to the 5th power. Oh, yes. That's problem number 8. So what we're going to be doing here, 
We're going to be dropping these parentheses once again. All right. 7m to the fourth power, p to the fifth power, minus 9m cubed, p to the fifth power, plus 11m to the fourth power, p to the fifth power, plus 15m cubed, p to the fifth power. There we go. Now, I'm going to start out with uh, alphabetically looking at the terms, and I notice that my m is uh, to the fourth power, and it's also to the third power. So I'm going to start with the one with the highest. So that is going to be my m to the fourth power terms. Mm -hmm. The m to the fourth power, p to the fifth power terms. Yeah. So combining the coefficients here, 7 plus 11 gives me 18 m to the fourth power, p to the, oh, that's an ugly p, p to the fifth power. That's much better. Then combining the negative 9m cubed p to the fifth power with a positive 15m cubed p to the fifth power, we're going to combine a negative 9 and positive 15. Well, unlike sign subtract, so you'll end up with a positive 6m to the third power p to the fifth power. And this is my answer for problem number 8. That's right. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Problem number 8. Okay. Continuing on. Yeah, continuing on. I have problem number nine now. With problem number nine, we have a scalar. We have a number in front of the set of parentheses that is multiplying. That's not one, finally. All right, so what do we do with a problem like this? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to distribute. Mm -hmm. You're going to do my favorite property in the world. We're going to be able to get our arrows popping on this problem. So I'm going to distribute the 4. That's right. I'm going to go crazy here. There you go. And I'm going to distribute my 5 in the second set of parentheses. I have my arrows popping. These are arrows, by the way. And multiplying this out. 4 times x squared, you'll end up with 4x squared. Multiplying 4 times negative 3x, that's negative 12x. Multiplying 4 times 7 is positive 28. Then, moving on to this second term here, we'll be distributing a 5. So 5 times 2x squared is going to be a positive 10x squared. Mm -hmm. Then you have 5 times negative 8x. That's going to be negative 40x. And finally, multiplying 5 times negative 4, that gives me negative 20, ladies and gentlemen. And this, this is what I end up with after I finish multiplying. Now, we're left with a situation that's similar to the problems that we had before, where we're going to be combining our like terms in descending order of the variable. So once again, we start with the terms with the highest exponent. So that would be my x squared terms, right? So I have 4x squared right here, and I have... 10x squared right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. So 4 plus 10, that gives me 14. So I have 14x squared. I'll be combining next this x to the first power term here. So that'll be negative 12x, negative 40x. That gives me negative 52x. Just like that. All right. Finally, we have 28 minus 20. So 28 minus 20, that just gives me 8. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the answer. That's it. 14x squared minus 52x plus 8 is the answer to problem number 9. All right. We have one final problem for you. Mm -hmm. One final problem for you. All right. For problem number 10, we have negative y times the quantity of y squared minus 4 plus 6y squared times the quantity of 2y minus 3. So what I'll be doing here, ladies and gentlemen, is once again, I'll be distributing. That's right. I'll be getting my arrows popping. Okay, so negative y times y squared. Remember, this is a negative y to the first power, and we'll be adding the exponents here. So negative y times y squared gives me a negative y to the third power. When multiplying your variables, you're going to add the exponents on those like variables. Then multiplying negative y times negative 4 gives me a positive 4y just like that. In the second term, I'll be distributing 6y squared. So here I'll be multiplying 6y squared times 2y. That gives me a positive 12y cubed. And then 6y squared times negative 3, that's a negative 18y squared. So this is going to be our result after we finish distributing. From there, I'll be writing my answer in descending order of my variable as I combine my like terms here. So I'm going to start with the y to the third power terms. This is a negative 1 and a positive 12. Well, 12 minus 1 is still 11, so I end up with 11y cubed for that first term. Then the next thing in line would be my y to the second power, that y squared term. But I don't have any like terms, right? So you're just going to bring it down. So it'll just be a negative 18y squared. 
Next, I'll be looking at that 4y to the first power. It doesn't have any like terms to combine it with, so we'll just bring it down. So this will be a positive 4y, and this is the answer to problem number 10, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, problem number 10, done and done. All right, so that being the case, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with 4 Ben Tutoring. This was adding polynomials. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you're able, please donate. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.